Hello everybody, Crit Crab here with another story, this one about an all too common complication in TRPGs where group dysfunction is concerned. I am, of course, talking about when you love the person you're playing with, but hate how they play. In this case, OP's close friend of over six years was also a chronic power gamer and cheater. So kick back, relax, put the entire Crit Crab Reddit playlist on in another tab, and let's get right into this. Roll post. I'll preface this by saying the player in question for this story is one of my close friends and he's a really good guy. If he's reading this, he probably knows it's about him, but no hard feelings dude, read the last paragraph. I'm writing this mostly to get it off of my chest and mind for good. I am in the middle of my first time DMing. Long story short, we couldn't ever find a steady DM, so I just decided I would do it. We're about 60 hours into the game at this point, and things are certainly beginning to ramp up. We have everything set up on D&D Beyond, which has been a great tool in aiding me when it comes to learning all of the rules as a first time DM. The player I'm talking about in this story actually introduced us to the site, so props to him for that. We had been playing for a long time, and I decided that I would be getting the D&D Beyond membership so that I could create a campaign so that all of my players could access homebrew content and so that we could use this players, who I'll call Joe, content that he purchased. That meant that all of the players had to join the campaign, and Joe was hesitant in doing so at first. We talked him into it and eventually he did. A little while later, we are all talking about feats and what they did. That night, I decided to peruse through everyone's character sheets to see what kind of feats they could equip. Joe's three-level character had not one, not two, not even three, but six feats. Basically, the entire game, he had six feats. As a first-time DM, I didn't understand that some of his stats, like plus seven persuasion, should have been impossible for his character. Joe likes to pick the most overpowered characters in any video game we play and tends to find them right off the bat, so I figured it was just another case of him finding that overpowered build. I was very wrong. I had a small idea Joe was cheating, but I couldn't exactly tell for sure. We were all still pretty new to D&D, although he had the most experience out of all of us. I just told him that I removed his feats and that he wasn't supposed to have them yet, and then tied it to a divine being that was helping him leaving his body in order to power up for the fight with the big bad evil guy who is another divine being. I figured that if he didn't know what he was doing was wrong, or if he did it on accident, I could at least throw his character some info in return for him getting nerfed. He didn't protest one bit when I took away his six feats, so at least that was easy to deal with. Another bunch of sessions passed, and I was talking with another player about some things he was getting for leveling up to five that he was a bit confused about. I decided to look at the other character sheets to make sure nobody else had similar confusions with the way their characters were supposed to work. One player had been doing everything correctly, who is the player that's been the most invested in the campaign, and another had only one thing slightly wrong but it got cleared up quickly. Then I got to Joe's character sheet. He had added a custom modifier to every single one of his ability scores, giving him a plus one to everything. His charisma became plus four, his strength was plus three, so on and so forth, you get the picture. I realized at that point that they had been like this the entire game. He was just as strong as the barbarian and had an excess of charisma. He had no abilities that were a minus one and one that was a zero, which should have been the minus one. His character was certainly overpowered and I knew that he had put in these values manually. This time, I was certain that Joe was cheating, but I still couldn't definitively say that. They could have been left over from the feats he had added by mistake. For instance, I told him that I was resetting the ability scores because he never talked to me about increasing them, and that he wasn't supposed to have that. Once again, he didn't protest at all. Last session, Joe didn't show up. It was an extra day for us to be able to play, so I woke up earlier than I normally do and got half the sleep I should have just so that we could all play. We waited for him for about half an hour, then texted him, to which he responded with, I don't really feel like playing today. We were all a little frustrated because he didn't tell us he wasn't coming over and we had to waste what little time we had waiting for him to not show up and I lost a lot of sleep for it. We collectively decided that we would run Joe's character essentially as an NPC, 
using him as minimally as possible so that he could stay alive for the next session. One of my players was going to play Joe for the whole session, since he had already ran two characters before for a short time. We went to look at Joe's character sheet in the campaign and couldn't find him. I was confused by this because I could see him just fine. I told him to look at the actual campaign, and lo and behold, he couldn't access Joe's character sheet despite seeing him labeled as a player. I went into the edit mode on the character sheet to find that it had been marked as private rather than public. Not one sleight of hand. Joe's character sheet was public up until I caught him messing with his ability scores. And I know that for a fact because I could see him in the quick menu for the campaign before, but I couldn't after it was set to private. I told my player that we could just decide what Joe's character would do, and I would just mark it on the sheet if he took any damage or used any spells. He had memorized a lot of what Joe's character was. This player is, like I said, super invested in the game. I began to look over Joe's sheet and what did I find other than a few of his ability scores, once again, with custom modifiers on them to get them up to a plus one. This time, it was only two or three instead of all of them to make it seem less obvious. This time, I knew for a fact that Joe was cheating. If the other times weren't enough to clue me in on it, this certainly was. I panicked, and to be honest, I'm still pretty stressed out from the whole situation because, like I said, this dude is a good friend of mine, and I didn't want to kick him from the game or make him feel like I didn't want to play with him anymore. But I knew that as the DM of the campaign, I needed to make sure there wasn't any funny business going on and deal with it accordingly. It isn't fair to the other players if someone's character is better than theirs because of cheating, and as D&D is a game, it has rules. I sent Joe a text after thinking for a few hours on what I should do that basically said that he was going to tell us as soon as possible if he isn't going to make it rather than just waiting for us to ask where he is and then told him that I saw his character sheet was marked as private and that I could still see all of his stats, and that they were modified again. I said that if I found any more manually added things on his character sheet without consulting me first about them, he wouldn't be able to play with us anymore. It took him a while to respond, but when he did, it was a simple, then f*** it, I'm out. My heart pretty much sank as I realized the effect this would have on the story. He's a lawful good paladin and the prince of the nation the party is currently in. And the rest of the players and I really hope it didn't ruin our relationship, because while D&D is just a game, we've been friends for over six years. I told him that he could still play if he wanted, he just couldn't change his character stats anymore. No response. None of us have heard from him at all for the past few days, but I'm still going to invite him to our next session just in case he had a change of heart. Here's to hoping he has. I want to stress that it really isn't like him to cheat in a game and then disregard any attempt at redemption, so I hope he's doing alright. End post. Well, I'll start this off by stating the obvious and saying that cheating on your stats is not only bad for everyone else at the table, it's also bad for the cheater. Having a low stat or two is a gift, it adds depth to your character and helps reinforce party teamwork and cohesion. I, for one, am really glad for OP for knowing when to put their foot down. Too often I see people either being too tolerant and letting their friends ruin the game and walk all over everyone else, or not being understanding enough and terminating an otherwise thriving friendship over them not being a good D&D player. And who knows, maybe this guy just isn't the D&D type. D&D really isn't for everyone and Joe seems a lot better suited to competitive wargaming and video games and that is totally fine. I'm over here hoping that OP and Joe can reconcile and move forward. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please do leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more stories just like this one. Till next time.